I'm going to talk about pea moth today, both in vining peas and combinable peas. Um, the importance of it in both of those crops for quality in particular, and a little bit about the life cycle and how we can manage it better using integrated techniques, which of course are really important in crop production. So pea moth is a pest that affects the quality of the peas more than it does yield. And of course, that's important in UK peas because most of them are grown for quality markets, either for human consumption or for seed. And it's equally important in both of those markets. So pea moths overwinter as cocoons in the soil and after pupation, the adults fly into the crops in May and June mainly. Um, and they lay their eggs on the foliage of the peas. Usually they fly into the crops at flowering, but it can be earlier. And it takes a period of time for the eggs to hatch, which is dependent on temperature. Now, this is where the monitoring system comes into effect. We monitor and we use a prediction tool at PGRO that tells us how long it's going to take the eggs to hatch in particular regions, depending on MET data that we collect and feed into that model. So traps need to go out now. Early to mid-May is the time to put your monitoring traps out, and I'll show you a few of those in a few minutes. Um, and then monitoring should occur three times a week. So every couple of days, you should be checking the traps to see how many moths are in the trap. So monitoring is important because it determines how long it's going to take the eggs to hatch. And what we're trying to do is interrupt the life cycle of the pest if we need to. If the caterpillars hatch out, they crawl across the foliage of the peas and they bore into the pea pods and feed on the seed. Um, and this is where they cause the quality damage. So we're trying to predict with our trapping and also the tool that we use at PGRO, how long it's going to take the eggs to hatch so that we can predict exactly what our spray date will be. The threshold associated with pea moth for vining peas, what we're looking for generally is presence of pea moths in the crop. And from that point, we would consider that to be our threshold because the tolerance for damage in vining peas is much lower than it is in combining peas. Um, in combining peas, we have a threshold of 10 moths or more in a trap on two consecutive occasions. So that's what you're looking for. So you're monitoring three times a week. If you find 10 in a trap on two occasions, then that's your threshold. And from that point, we are then calculating exactly when your spray date will be from the point of your threshold. Now that's normally between 10 and 20 days, depending on temperatures. As temperatures increase, that period gets shorter. So we're looking at, you know, often sprays applied in June. The importance of monitoring and using the prediction tool is to get the timing exactly right. So what we're trying to do is determine exactly when the larvae are going to be crawling across the plant before they get to the pod. Um, now, it's tempting for some people to just apply an insecticide when they apply their first fungicide at first pod, thinking that that will control the pest. But if your caterpillars are present on the plant a week later, it's likely that the pyrethroids that you're using to control it will not be effective at that point. So you will not control PMOS. So I think I can't emphasize enough the importance of doing the monitoring and using our tool at PGRO. And likewise, the system also tells you when you don't need to spray. So if you don't reach a threshold in combining peas, there isn't a requirement to apply insecticides in the crop. And that's equally important. Saves you time, saves you money. Um, so what I'll do now is show you the traps, how we put them together and how we put them into the field. We have two types of trap that we can use for monitoring pea moth. Um, we have what's called a delta trap, which is this pyramid shaped trap that comes in normally um, sets of two. Um, and then we have a castellation trap, which is the more traditional moth bucket trap. We don't normally receive posts or poles to put the traps on in the field. So um, I tend to order these that you can get from any of the pest monitoring companies where it's just a, a, a plastic pole that will can go in the ground, but you can just use, the, use a post um, and put a nail in it or anything like that. So with the uh, delta traps, this will come flat packed um, and it will come with these fold out sticky cards that we, we can see here. Now, all traps will come with a pheromone lure, which you can see here on the sticky card in this case. 
um, and they'll come in sealed packets which you need to open take the lures out and in the case of the delta traps once you've put it together um, you just slide the sticky card in there and the pheromone lure goes onto the sticky card now this will last the whole season the lure will you will need to change the sticky cards if there's lots of moths around um, and just keep the lure put it on your new sticky and then the ends fold up like this so that it's secure and that it won't blow away in the wind both ends fold up with the bucket traps they come in in sections so there'll be several sections that come in the in the packet that you receive for these the lure is slightly different so the lure goes in the top here there's a little basket that just slots into the top of the the, the top part of the trap and the lure goes in there and then you put a little cap on it just to keep it dry and safe from blowing away now this top section of the bucket trap then slots um, there's an insert here which slots inside now with the sticky cards in this trap it's slightly different now there's two things you can do whichever suits you really depending on how much sticky you want to get on you you can either use a circle and you just peel off one side of that it will have paper on both sides and then drop that in the bottom of the trap before you put it together the method that i prefer is to use strips of the sticky card again just peel off one side of it fold it round so that the sticky is in the middle so that it doesn't stick to the inside of the trap and then drop that in there like that now that makes it easier to get in and out because the sticky on these cards is very sticky and then slot your insert there and then this just fits onto the top slots in you'll see the slots on the side and on the top part of the trap and then you secure it with this plastic strip here then that is ready to go out and i'll show you how to just attach these to the pole with the pole um, we've got a clip here which is a crocodile clip which is really useful actually in this case because what you can do then is move the traps up and down depending on the crop canopy height so each time you come back just check the canopy height and move your trap so that it's just about at canopy height so in this case about here and then we'll either thread this bit of string here through the hole and tie it and then once that's secure all you'll need to do is raise it like that each time you come back um, or likewise with the bucket trap the same the same applies so these have got these little pieces of string with the plastic ends on them so that's a bit easier as well um, and just thread that through there clip it into the bucket the top part of the bucket hopefully and then that just hangs there now that's reasonably secure now it should stay there um, you can tie it if you need to just to stop it tipping sideways and it's waterproof so the only thing that's going in that trap is pea moths. The pheromone lures are very specific to pea moths, so that is all you will catch. Um, you do occasionally with the delta traps, but very, very infrequently get the odd other moth that might just be flying through by accident. But um, mostly it'll be pea moth, and they are small moths. They're sort of a silvery brown colour with tiny white markings on the tips of the wings, but um, they're really only probably less than a centimetre long. Over the last couple of years, we've seen quite high levels of pea moth damage in traded samples um, at times. And this might be partly due to the very high temperatures that we've had in that sort of period of activity, which may have speeded up the development of egg hatch and caught people out a little bit in terms of management. So that's when it becomes really important that A, you're monitoring, and then B, you're going to the PGRO website to check spray prediction dates for your area um, we have some samples here where we've got different levels of damage um, the accepted level of damage in peas in combining peas is around two percent more than that um, and you'll start to be penalized for the removal of any pea moth damage if it's possible to remove it once we start to get up to nine or ten percent damage in in the pea sample it's quite difficult to remove that then using the, the, the techniques that we have. So if we have a look at these samples in particular, 
we've got a range from, in this case, about 17% or just over 17% damage in peas. And you can see the damage here, very clear. Just nibbling around the edge of the pea. Quite a lot of frass is left in the pea samples as well. So, um, and this is not acceptable for human consumption and seed. And in vining peas, of course, the tolerance level is zero. So it's really important that we, we monitor in vining peas as well. As you start to come down, so that would be unacceptable and wouldn't really be cleanable. Um, we get to about 10%, which is borderline as, as to how easy it would be to clean that. And again, you can see pea moth damage here again. So, um, and these are all evaluated at the, um, at the grain trading labs. Um, when we come down to, you know, 2 to 0%, which these two samples here are, so we've got just over 2%. You can see a difference in the sample immediately. So although there are some damaged peas in here, it's only at just over 2%. And this is more acceptable and much easier to clean if it needs cleaning. And then we get down to just under half a percent damage um, where, at the sort of lab analysis. And it's, you know, a perfect sample, really. So these two, particularly this one, are what we're aiming for. When we look at these high levels of damage, so in this case, just over 17% and around 10%, they may, those crops may well have been sprayed for pea moth. Um, but if they're sprayed a week early or a week late, then the, the insecticides are not effective. So you then see high levels of damage. Um, and I think that just emphasises the importance, really, of once you've monitored is to check the PGRO prediction tool on our website, which will give you an exact spray date based on your own threshold. Um, estimations are really not helpful for pea moth control, so so please do that. Um, you know, and when you come to the end where we're looking at these very low levels of damage, it just shows how effective an application can be um, if it's put on at the right time.